Hello, it's Celia, and I hope you all are doing fine. I am on a Easter break, or I'm I'm at at home, but I have a week off. And here in Norway, we have a very quirky tradition when it comes to Easter. And uh, many of us are going to the mountains. Not me, but a lot of people are going to the mountains. And they are reading crime fiction and mysteries and watching crime mysteries on on TV. And I haven't been reading a lot of crime or genre fiction the last couple of years. But this year I decided to join in. And it all started when I got the new book by Jonespe in the mail. And this is Touched or The Thirst. It was released now in March, I think, or in April, I'm not sure. And it's the newest Harry Hole book. And when I got this, I was like, thanks. Um, I'm a little bit behind on this series, so I would read it when I have the time. And then I put it away. <clears throat> but then I started to think about why I hadn't read the last two books about Harry Hole because I really liked the, most of the books in his series until the eighth book, I think, The Leopard. I overall liked the character development and the mysteries and um, the way he was describing Oslo and the way he was using the way he was developing the characters, I really enjoyed that. And he, I think Jonesfru also is a good writer. So I was, start to think, I was starting to think about why I stopped reading his books. And the only reason I stopped reading Harry Hole was because when this book was released, that's Phantom, it's the ninth book, I was really excited and I was so ready to read it, but then I started to hear some reviews and talking to people who said that this book was so sad and shocking and it's about drug abuse. Um, so I, get really, I got really terrified that Harry Hole was going to die to get killed. So I just said, no thank you, <laughs> I will not read a book where one of one of my favorite characters dies, so I was just, no, not interested. But then, uh, he released Politi or Police in 2013, and then I was spoiled because it says Harry Hole is back, so obviously he didn't die in this book. But then I was kind of put off by the whole um, crime genre, so I was not that interested in reading this. So I put that, put that off as well. And now The Thirst has been released and I started to feel the urge to read some of his books again. So this week I did the typical Norwegian thing and read crime. Two and a half books to be exact. I think they are very good. I am really enjoying them, but at the same time, I'm think I'm a little bit um, exhausted right now. I'm not that excited to finish this book, even though the plot is interesting and and kind of gruesome. I am a little bit tired of the whole crime but thing. I need to talk about the two books I've been reading. <clears throat> and the first one, as I said, is The Phantom. And this book is very different from the other books by UNESCO, I think. Um, and 
the first um, very clear difference is that in this book there are no serial killers at all and it has been a lot of serial killers in his other novels and Harry Hole isn't a police investigator anymore and he is he has disappeared and for three years and he has come back to Oslo to solve a case as a private person um, and um, this book is much more realistic than his other novels in my opinion it is very gritty and true and grimy um, it takes place in the in the drug scene in Oslo and not in like the high-end drug scene it's on the lover of the lover it's the heroinists and the junkies and with the prostitutes and yeah it's kind of messy and in Oslo there has been a murder but this murder has been solved so the police isn't paying that much attention but Harry is back because the one who has committed the murder is the son of the woman he wants that he still loves so he's back trying to find out what really happened and at the same time there's a new drug on the streets that are making people very addicted and there is a phantom a new drug lord that is killing off all his contenders and so the crime aspect in this novel is not as speculative or huge as in his other books they are very as i said realistic and you get a very deep look into the to the drug scene to the environment on the around the oslo s on the oslo s and um, the streets nearby and i feel like this book is very this book is very well written i think this is his best book to be honest and it's also i don't know how to put it i don't read this as a crime fiction novel or a genre fiction novel i read this more like a literary fiction with crime aspects uh, the most important part in this book is the relationships between the characters and the character development and you really get to know Harry very well um, I think you get to know him reading through all the books you get a very good uh, knowledge of him and um, what I really like about Harry and is that he is like this superb investigator and at the same time he is this heavily flawed man with demons he is a drug addict he is an alcoholic he put everyone first and he he is a very like self-destructive way of behaving um, he is all, always very obsessed by solving the case and to catch the killer um, and he's always on the victim's side even though that clash with the politics and the, and the other people in the police force so he is not a very popular man but he is a very like this brilliant investigator he is always living on the edge and he is as i said very self destructive and he's blaming himself for everything that goes wrong and he's putting it all inward so he has a lot of uh, of phantoms or ghosts that are chasing him from 
all his cases and they are like tormenting him so yeah he is a tormented guy but also a man with a very big heart so I have grown very fond of him and this book rekindled my love for him um, so I think that was what I liked the most about this book that you really get under the skin even more with Harry Hole and also with the other characters the drug addicts the victim the murder victim he has his own voice um, you got the corruption in the police force and you get everything and everything is so realistic and so naturalistic and you know everything is going to hell it's like reading a Emil Solar novel uh, in that aspect um, yeah almost everything goes to hell um, and the way he describes Oslo and the way he describes the parts of Oslo that you not necessarily see when you're visiting the city is brilliant and I am at the same time reading Hunger by uh, Knut Thompson and he's also very good with the descriptions of Oslo and Jonas Bö has written the foreword of a new edition of the Hunger I don't think that's a coincidence that they, he is the one that has um, written the foreword because he is an amazing describer of Oslo in the 2000s uh, as Joe Thompson is an amazing describer of Oslo in the 1800s so they have a connection I think but this book yeah I really loved it it was amazing and the plot is very believable uh, even the kingpin or the drug lord thing uh, some of it might be a little bit far-fetched but it suits the story it's an amazing book it's a very good description of the drug scene and how it is to be a drug addict and yeah so sadly this is a book that you can't read without reading the first books in the series so yeah so if you will read this and i highly recommend it you have to start with the first book the bat and that back that book is bad it's really bad and um, then you have to continue with the cockroaches or something uh that one is yeah not that bad but still pretty bad and then from the red breast and up it's good except the leopard is the book before this one it's heavily on the speculative side i think um yeah but it's good but a little too much unnecessarily brutal uh, this one is is as brutal as it has to be because of the subject and it's yeah it's wonderful so that was the first book <clears throat> then i jumped to police this is a continuation of phantom and it picks up pretty straight after i think and this is more like the traditional Jonespa Harry Holy books. Uh, it's very good. Uh, it's violent. If it's if it has been another author than Jonespa, this could have been very speculative. But he writes with a heart, I think. And I think I, in my opinion, everything that he is writing about, every gruesome de detail has a purpose. And they are there for a reason and it is unpleasant to read about but it fits together so well and one other thing that he is very good with good at is to leave you with some small breadcrumbs so when the 
when you get the solution uh, it is logical but it's also a surprise and this is yeah it was both a surprise and like yeah why didn't i see that he used a lot of point of views in this book and they all have it it is a meaning behind using all of them because you get to know them so well all the characters and there is one character in this book that has been with us for like i don't know the beginning the third book or something and something happened to that character and i think this is the first time that i ever cried over a <laughs> crime fiction um there also a scene or a passage where he's using a point of view of a young girl that I thought was not necessarily necessary <clears throat> but then something happens in the end that made it all clear so Jonas Bö is clearly very good at planning out the story and all the end all the loose ends are tied together and if they're not tied together they will return in the next book this so, week I've been yeah. reading three crime fiction books and I think I will be reading some poetry next week. I think I need it. I do hope you all have had a lovely Easter and that you are enjoying spring and yeah. How about?